Hey Balance fans, my name is Rene and welcome back to another episode of How to Play. Today we're going to be taking a look at everybody's favorite vulpine, Pip. What is a vulpine? One of Pip's main strengths is that he's got some of the quickest acting, most easily applied, and effective CC in the game with his right mouse button, Explosive Flask. His ability to slow not only single enemy champions, but a large group of them very frequently makes him a valuable little ally and potentially very deadly support with his strong follow-up damage. Secondly, Pip has great AoE burst heals and AoE burst damage. Pip is the OG of AoE. And what that means is that he's one of the best when healing or damaging enemies quickly in an area. Though his heals aren't as substantial or constant as some of the other support champions, he does provide strong burst healing, damage, and CC, which can catch enemies off guard who think they're sitting pretty. Last but not least, chickens. Pip's ult is enough to feed an entire party at the Stannis Farm barbecue, and that's no simple task, trust me. Turning enemies into chickens is not only demoralizing to their psyche, it's a fantastic counter to any champion giving you a hard time. At the end of the day, Pip has a ton of versatility in his kit, decent mobility, and good damage on top of that. But when it all comes down to the wire, even a cute little vulpin, or squirrel, or raccoon, whatever he is, beats a chicken. Maybe not a squirrel. Moving into the skills section. Pip's left mouse button is called Potion Launcher, and it's a custom launcher that fires volatile potions that explode in an area on impact, dealing damage. The flight speed and trajectory of these potions differs from other weapons, so be sure to note that this isn't the same as shooting Cassie's bow and adjust your aim accordingly. As with most AoE champions, shooting up is a very difficult task. Therefore, being able to shoot down onto enemies to take advantage of your splash damage will make you much more effective in thwarting your enemies in the realm. It's also good to note that Pip does not have any fall off damage from distance and can't headshot. So a body shot from up close or a body shot from far, far away is gonna do the same amount of damage. He will suffer some fall off if you shoot away from the body and only catch part of the enemy in the splash of your AOE. Therefore, the best thing to do is to aim and hit somebody directly in order to maximize your damage. Pip's right mouse button is called Explosive Flask. And when it hits you, bad things happen. It deals a small amount of damage, but moreover, it slows you by possibly more than any other skill in the game. Oh, and it lasts forever. Seriously, getting hit by this thing literally feels like you can't move, and it sets up Pip to fire an easy potion launcher attack to burst opponents down and take them out quite easily. In fact, Pip's bonus damage can only be activated by shooting an enemy with explosive flask and hitting them immediately afterwards before Explosive Flask wears off with your normal Potion Launcher attack. Firing with your right mouse button, then immediately hitting your left mouse button is the best way to confirm the bonus damage and surprise your enemies, putting them in an unexpectedly bad position to fight back. It's also good to note that only your first shot after using Explosive Flask onto an enemy will create a bonus damage effect. Any subsequent shots following that will not have additional damage added onto them. That is, of course, unless you reapply Explosive Flask. Pip's F skill is called Weightless. For a short duration of time, Pip becomes weightless, as if he weighed a lot already. The dude's like 3 foot 7, and he starts jumping around the map. During this, his movement speed is increased and he's able to reach vertically up to ledges that were previously impossible for the little guy. This skill also allows him to remove all debuffs on use, meaning if he were slowed by another champion, he would be able to break that slow with this ability. Lastly, this skill can be used while still firing potions, allowing Pip to occasionally activate this in duels just to make it more difficult for his opponents to aim or to get a higher vantage point in order to shoot down onto targets. Also, for your information, you can shoot normally during waitlist but cannot use your explosive flask. So if you want to slow somebody, make sure you do it before you jump. And if you don't know how to jump, that's pressing the space bar, just so you're aware in case you're super new to the game and haven't figured that out yet. Bip's Q ability is his healing potion, and that allows him to quickly burst heal himself and or any allies that are within the radius of his potion when it lands. Remember, you have to throw it at your feet if it's going to heal you. I can tell you many a duel I've seen, even with pro players, where they've accidentally thrown their potion out onto their target they're shooting, 
as it does take practice to look down while you're frantically fighting someone in between shooting and being shot at, only to press Q and get back into the fight. It's good to note that although the potion's heal amount is capped, it can heal multiple targets who are within the radius, so your healing effectiveness could literally go up five times if you happen to position yourself well and time your healing potions so that they hit multiple teammates at once. You can toss this as far as you would a normal basic attack, so having map awareness is crucial in being able to support your teammates from afar and change the tide of the battle. Lastly, but certainly not least, Pip's ultimate is called Evil Mojo. And if you've ever seen Austin Powers, you know it's all about the mojo, baby. Here, he breaks out his most interesting and savory potion, which turns anyone caught in its effect into chickens. Literally, your enemies will lose control of all their abilities and be forced to run around with full control of their movement direction as chickens for what feels like a generation. It does a small amount of damage at the start and resets everyone's health to 1500 for the entire duration. The key to this is that even large health tanks such as Fernando suddenly become susceptible to being killed by 2-3 basic attacks from anybody. This is a huge counter to large health pools and champions that just won't go down easily. However, remember that if someone has less than 1500 health, they will still be reset to the 1500 health mark when this ultimate is used. So in rare cases, you could actually be giving enemies a better chance to survive than if they had not been transformed. Try to make sure you don't have to reload during Evil Mojo also, as it can waste valuable time when your opponents are vulnerable and helpless, possibly allowing them to escape your evil alchemy. If the enemies aren't killed, their health will return to what its previous state was before they were transformed. Now that we've covered Pip's skills, let's move on to his loadouts. Here we are again at the loadout section. The basic loadout focuses more on mobility and a greater chance to heal allies by increasing healing potions radius. It also focuses on giving you healing options to regenerate health while using your movement skill to escape, helping to keep you in the fight longer and giving you a better chance at survival. Personally, I like to use this type of loadout, allowing me to consistently slow enemies with my explosive flask and lifesteal off them with my next shots. This helps me when in duels and when I'm hitting many groups of enemies, it allows me to stay topped off health-wise in case a flanker or damage dealer attempts to take me down. If you want to check out my builds or any other players, go to import, type their name, and you should see all of their loadouts for that champion. As far as items go, I'm a big fan of cooldown reduction on Pip, so Kronos is a usual pickup. I also favor morale boost for the increased chance to chicken enemies, cauterize for the AoE and easy to apply anti-heal, and haven for the damage reduction. Now that we've covered the loadouts, let's move into the final section, the tips and tricks. Alright, so my first tip for Pip is to explosive flask potion combo as frequently as possible, and choose targets wisely. A great combo can burn a Cassie down to half health and make her move slower than a turtle, no offense Makoa allowing your teammates to follow through and take her out. If that same combo was focused towards a full health Fernando on the point, it wouldn't be nearly as effective, and the slow would be useless since he's standing there anyway. One thing is learning to mechanically fire both shots quickly so that they burst the target and catch them off guard, but the other aspect is utilizing that slow to help your teammates capitalize on weakened and fleeing enemies. My second tip for Pip is to ult key targets to eliminate them easily. This means tanks that have way too much sustain, or healers that are too valuable to their team's success on the point, or even flankers that are on 10 plus kill streaks and taking out every one of your backline damage dealers. Being aware of who is hurting you most will allow you to make the biggest impact on the fight with your ult, and that can often be the difference maker in how things turn out. Lastly, Pip is that all around Vulpin. Pip's a do it all man. He can heal, he can do decent damage, he can slow enemies and even hard CC them when his ultimate is available. I don't recommend playing Pip and trying to outheal a Grover or a Ying or someone more geared towards healing. I also don't recommend trying to outdamage an Androxus. I think Pip is best played as a jack of all trades. Sometimes, helping to finish off an enemy by using your weightless offensively and healing yourself with your healing potion can mean more in a fight than healing up your teammate who ends up dying. Making the right decisions all the time is impossible but becoming aware that Pip can do a lot more than his role denotes can make you a very strong Pip player and ultimately increase the amount of fun and success you have in the realm. All right, well, that's going to do it for me today and our favorite Volpine Pip. If you want to see more of my channel, you can check me out at Rain Day Gaming, and that'll be in the description below. 
Also, if you want to stay tuned to more Paladins game episodes like how to play and other stuff on the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to see the latest episode that you might have missed, go ahead and click the annotation at the end of your screen. As always, remember to never give up, never stop gaming, and we'll see you all in the realm.